Hi, this is Reese from Crowdstorm and this video is about the report documentation. So most times when we do onboarding of rollouts of uh, client sites, as you know, is that we do we set up the reports for you if you're um, wanting to do the reports inside of Creator itself. The key thing we start uh, after about 60 days, we need you to probably start changing them yourself um, and going through some of the changes. Now, the, the thing that with our reports is a very, very um, powerful tool, but a powerful tool needs great responsibility of just understanding how it works as well. So this video is an overview of how you can actually uh, change those reports. So the key thing with reports, we've uh, broken it down into seven elements, what it is, and it gives you understanding of pretty much these seven elements. So there's the surface, design surface that you have, um, the, you've got the field list on the right side that will go through, main menu toolbox, property uh, panels, which is extremely important that you get used to as well. Report Explorer and Toolbox, okay? So those are seven elements you will go through in this video and we'll show you what it looks like. So we've opened up a particular sale and if, if you notice in each sale, you've got a print button along here. If you select the print button, you've got a little pencil to customize it. So if I went to, uh, to orders, it would have a print button. And again, there's a little pencil to customize that report. So what we're going to do is just customize this report. So we'll choose a quote and print and therefore click on the uh, one, of the one of these reports. So we're going to change this report here, okay, on the pencil side. It's going to load up. So we'll load the report. The first thing we do have is the, uh, the um, surface design. And what that means is that you've got things like surface design where you've got rulers along here that you can move the pages to the left and right that can expand it out. And if you actually expand it across, for example, uh, across here, the, the elements go red, meaning it's getting cropped by, we're reducing the page size. So you wanna extend that. Also, you've got the margins up and down here as well. You can move things around. Just to help you out, you have bands. This kind of bands you may have to get familiar long-term with it where you have margin detail of the report itself. You can have groups and multiple groups in here. That's like, for example, the line items on a, on a group and the footer or the line what, a blog there. That, that's bands across here. Other elements you have is the binding of the fields. What that means is if you look at here, um, this is a um, field and it's um, different to this field, which has got a little cylinder in it. Now, this means that it's just a field that you can type in. If you double click on this, you can change the text saying X, Y, Z. So you can double click on those uh, little elements with our cylinder, it's like a text field. But if you can see here, if there's a cylinder in here, it means it's a field. And that means you will um, have to change the uh, property. And that is the property panel. We'll go through that as well, but that is where you grab the field. So if there is a little cylinder there, that means it's a field which we need to fit, uh, change it in the property panel panel. But if you see it without a cylinder, you can then change it by double clicking it. You can change it here, but it changes the element to text cell 12. So just know that if there's a cylinder there, go to the property panel and change the field there, which we'll cover that very shortly. That's a surface level of changing the actual um, the surface level of the report. Next is the field list. Again, I'll probably in this video, I'll put the documentation on the video itself. The field list is on the right side in here, and you can see it's a list of fields here. So if you click on the cylinder here on the property panel, you'll be able to see a list of fields. If you expand out, you can see all the fields. So what happens if you scroll through, you've got collection fields, and then you've got all the fields along here. You can drag and drop a field, for example, promise date, and I can drag it into the actual report so in the field list you can drag fields across without typing them out into the property panel and drop that and again as i mentioned beforehand you'll get a little cylinder to mark that it actually is a field and you can move this field across okay across here like that for example now if i select it and put the delete key there it just removes it okay little glitches you get with the reports if you find where you can't move it you just have to click on these buttons here and, and just kind of jinx it a bit to get it to move around and drag and drop sometimes it gets stuck mentioning it gets stuck um that's the the 
The button that I just clicked here in the little hamburger section over there is the main menu. Now, majority of these elements are not for you. Just pretty much the save button is what you want to do. So it's like anything, it doesn't automatically save. So the web, you probably want to make some changes. Click on the main menu and then click on save. The next thing we have is the main toolbox, which is the toolbox up here. You would use that off and on on those things. For example, it's nice for when you have made changes on the fly, so you haven't even start saved it, but you can actually click on the preview button. Mind you, if the if you go if you're targeting a quoted or a sale, you got a lot of sales. It may take a while to preview it as well. So sometimes it's a good idea to create another page and preview that particular report itself. But that will give you a preview button. It gives you the main toolbox. Will give you export to a PDF, Excel document, all these extra things to have a look see of them printed out that way and you can go page uh, across here through the main toolbox. So that gives you that. Gives you little things like undos. If you drag and drop and change anything here, it gives you undos and delete items by selecting and clicking the delete item. If, for example, the keyboard delete doesn't quite work as well. So that does happen so far. So as I mentioned beforehand, so that's the main toolbox section there. Now the property panel, that is the everything. That's pretty much majority of your work will be on the property panel. Now what is the property panel? It's this section on the right section here. So if um, you wanna click on the, um, as I mentioned before, you got a field list here, with a little um, cylinder here, which you move now to the properties, property panel, you select that little cog up here on the right side. Okay, you can hide it here if you had to, but just make sure you expand it out. And this is everything that you need to know. So for example, you need to select a field. So we're gonna select the quote date section here. You single select it and you can tell that there is little uh, square, um, uh, square boxes on either side of the actual element. If you select here, anywhere here, it just changes the property panel on the right side. So if I click on an image, it will change the property panel to manage image objects. If you change a text field, it will change the property panel for text objects, okay? So start very small, play around with it, and where we're we going with this, we're gonna change a field, which that is a common thing. So remember I said on the, um, the earlier that the cylinders are a field. So we're gonna single select the field uh, called quote date and we want to change it. So we change it in the property panel on the right side. The key thing with that is that there's a couple of rules it has and it's not um, it's not intuitive. You just gotta know it's black and, and white. Um, so for example, notice in the text section, when you select a field that has a cylinder, there's a text section called table cell one. It's irrelevant because a little function key there is saying once, if there is a cylinder there, the F will be highlighted in light blue. So when I click on this and go into text expression, this is now the text expression of the field. So if I, I have the ability to, it has, um, 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 tally sense. What that means is if I highlight it out and typed in another field and I just delete it, I put a square brackets because uh, the fields are wrapped in square brackets. It will give you a list of uh, fields that you can type in. That's called tally sense. So what tally sense in here? So I'm going to choose a field. Um, it's because the date field. So I am going to go to sale date, for example. Hit the enter key. Okay. It will, TeleSense has some little weird stuff there, so just make sure that it has wrapped with the square brackets inside that. Now, just if you have noticed that there's some fields here that look odd here, there's a bit of a glitch in the matrix, and what that is is that if you've got your views not 100%, uh, for example, my zoom ratio of a web browser is 90%, so if it's not 100%, this dialog box is going to go foobar in a nice way. So you can see there that you have um, some Explorer. So I'm going to fix that up, but I need to let you know that's just kind of how it is. So I've made the uh, my, my Windows browser to be 100% and bang, uh, the expression editor is now happy, basically. So little things you're going to get with um, technology. So that gives you the ability. You can look at the fields in here and view them in here. We do have 
uh, functions in here. I am not going to go into explaining all the different functions. There are a lot of um, documentations on linked on this video on how to do cool stuff. It's pretty much like Excel. If you're familiar with Excel, it's the same language as Visual Basic language of making cool stuff on certain fields. So you can do calculations, but you're probably here just to change some fields across, which will help you here. Other things that we're going to do in the property panel that we need to do is the string format. Now, because there's a date here, um, the string format you can click on here and it gives you a choice of what you, you know, choose your own journey on a, on a particular date format. But if we were choosing a, um, a currency field, a quantity, for example, not a current, price each, for example, versus quantity field, um, they will have different string formats. So a Price each has the ability to have a dollar sign. You don't need to have to remember that, that code, but you would have to click on currency and choose the format that you want in the string format versus quantity. You don't want to have a dollar sign there. You click on the string format and then change it around. Okay, so that's something that the string format in the property panel is where you can change the behavior of the view. If it's a text field, um, yeah, so if it's a currency field or anything like that as well. Um, Again, the property panel has a lot of extra stuff in here. You can click on it and may, or may break stuff, but that helps you um, understand that. Um, but the more important thing, when I just said that, the thing that you really want to play around with is the appearance, which is the font side of the fan. And what that is, is that is you've got appearance, font, and it's a little twister in here on the right side, and you've got size. And a lot of people always um, one particular fonts, don't want times numeral, wants R and all that stuff. So you can select them and change the whole fonts along here. You've got, uh, there's so many elements that I've got from here. I'm just going to whiz through them. The background card, or the padding in the actual cells, the text alignment of them, the trimmings of them, strike through, um, borders around them, widths of columns, colors uh, in there. And there's a lot of, um, appearances in here that you have, uh, that's pretty much most scenarios. So if I select subtitles, it's solid, border around the actual lines on certain lines, you know, bold in them, and you can then, um, there are also uh, 13 characters bold in there as well, as well in the middle left, for example, where you, so you can, for example, this here is going to be in the property panel, top center and, this here section here on this field is going to be top left. So you can move the field around on the property panel per clicking through those elements. Okay. There are some heavier stuff skim through. Um, you click on here and you um, scroll up and you go to the text expression and you get the a lot of calculations, your string builder. Again, it's very similar to basic, um, where if you're familiar with Excel, you pretty much can have a look-see and um, play around and do some magic in that, but it's, it is something that you probably, this video won't cover that is at all. Now, the next one's called Report Explorer in here, okay? Um, see, remember here we talk about the property panel, field list, um, we haven't, we're not going to cover functions in this particular one, um, but we're going to go to Report Explorer. Very uh, massive overview on this where you can actually look at the fields and select them because sometimes you're going to try and figure out where are the fields in here and you can look at them. Now, again, you've got the, um, the ban banners over here, which is detail view, um, uh, group header, see here you can select them and you can see what they are as well and then click on the little um, pencil and edit them in the uh, report explorer. Just a nice way to play around with it and just see, for example, the elements for that table, for example, if you can't find, because you're clicking it through, go, oh, I can't find stuff, I can go to like a report explorer, like Windows Explorer, um, instead of looking at the folders, you can look at the folders and see the properties of the folders themselves. Nice to know, but you're probably more advanced. I'm going to skip through that section there. Now, the last one is the toolbox. It's on the left side here, okay? So there's some missing elements on the images. We just haven't uh, fixed them up yet, but you've got things like a text field in here. A text field, you can 
bring a label across. So if you just want to bring a label, you just hold the mouse button down with and hold the left button down and drag it along in here. Okay. So if you're wanting to bring just a text field to say blah, blah, you can uh, use the toolbox on the left side and you can drag it across and say, double click on this and say hi. Okay. So that's just going to have the um, text field say hi in here. Remember, you can use the property panel as well. I'm just going to see if I can uh, select it and there is high there or you can double click it and say hi okay so, so you see how they all work together but you can um, WYSIWYG experiences where you just want to drag and drop them you've got just go through nicely get a checkbox here you're probably not going to use that if you want to put a checkbox and not that I need not that's going to happen uh, company logo that can bring the company logo now I think by default that is the company logo there, but that is the company logo that comes from the settings BO. Um, you've got um, I'm trying to highlight what that is. It's the that's a company ABN number. You've got things like rich text format. That's important if you want to put um, terms. So you drag and drop rich text format, and um, a rich text format is like you can go to web page for example, like this one here, and you can just copy that here and you can that's like your terms you can double click on that and paste it and that is uh, going to just format that rich text but you have to ex um, expand it out remember we had talked about before the surface design you, you have to extend the footer drag it down extend it out so a bit of nurturing as you know that's um this is needs to fit in you can just keep on doing it see here now I don't think if you you can just reduce the property panel, you can reduce the size in here. So you can see the the seven elements all relate with each other. Like get your head around all of them because they all will work together for you to, to uh, uh, help you to design the reports. Now see that gets stuck a little bit. Move this uh, surface area just to be extended a little bit more so you can fit the description in here. So, rich text format is good for terms. You grab your terms with all your spill, paste it in, it'll keep the format, paste it in here. Then you've got to stretch it out, use the property panels to reduce the size to fit into it or extend out the surface area here. So, it's everything's WYSIWYG but it's just this video is going to show you how they all work together again documentation on this video link um, to read more up about it but more you get to um, use it the reason why a lot of our clients as they get more experience love this because they can do so much it just does a huge amount new users hate it and apologize always apologize in advance but we can't go back because they are like really power users love this because they can do amazing things and report dashboards all these things so we know it's just just go through the pain of understanding it and you, it will be powerful short term um, for you um, next is uploading the image you can drag that little image icon there drag it into the report section little things you want to know here you can just uh, select the uh, source or the URL the source here you're just going to click on that I'm just going to pause it for a second so I can bring an image across it just didn't, uh, didn't want to see the, the my file or the images of our clients. So I've cl clicked on that. And so the key thing with that is if I upload an image and it's like 200 by 500, for example, when I preview that image, it's not going to look good itself. It's quite a big in here. I'm, I'm going to just probably uh, extend it out, do some really just destructive views and see how it doesn't look good because the image is not stretched. It's, it's only in a container right now and the image is bigger see if you can see it look in these it's it's bigger here and if you preview it, it just doesn't look good okay so it's a classic mistake that we do all the time so you want to select it and then click on the sizing and you had a couple options it's stretch um i don't know what the others really do um the stretch is always our thing and now it's stretched to horrible so you want to stretch it out to make it nice and uh, nice and neat and then preview then and bang you've got an image in the reporting section there as well so you can drag and drop images nicely there um, again we're going to go through there's um, panels there are you can insert tables in here you've got a lot of other things lines across here and these are advanced stuff that as you play around with it you can even inject PDFs it just 
we, we will need special hands to go through some of these features with you and just charge you for that because it's going to be just too hard to explain. So you can have reports inside of reports, reports in, uh, with PDS on the reports. You can have bands, lines, all these extra stuff along here. So that's connected to the toolbox here itself. Okay, so that is the seven elements of the report design. I'm going to close this and not save. Um, it will warn you about saving. Just It's just something that I forgot to mention when you do press print. If you want some reports to go away, you click on these reports here and say, like, no, I want that to go away. And you have the ability to see inactive reports in here. For example, if I go to quotes, I've got plenty of inactive reports. Click on print and oh, I don't, but you can hide them and you can um, make it easier. But um, that's the report designer of doing the, the design service field list, main menu, the toolbox, the property panel, which is the most important thing I feel, the report explorer and the toolbox on the left side. So the, the two things you'll be playing around with is the property panel on the right side and the toolbox on the left side. The other two things you'll be playing around with. The rest, you're just, it's a constant journey, but this is a nice 20 minute video of understanding the basics of the report engine. It's powerful. But it just, um, it's just, it's definitely the accounting packages that allowed you to tick and that's all you get. It's really cool and ma makes sense. But the thing that we have now is that you have to now move on the journey of changing the fields around, dragging, dropping them and, and playing around. So that's the first video of, um, of uh, report designing and I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.